So now we move on to the question and answer session. So it's a brief question and answer session. There are a few rules for the session and this is the mic in front of the audience on this side. And whoever want to put a question may come to the front and there is one mic in the middle also. So they can come to the mic point and then they should introduce their, themselves, their name, the course and the campus where they are studying. They have to introduce and then they have to put the question briefly. Uh, please note that point. So put the question briefly upon the topic and up to the point. So that's very important. And naturally, non-Muslim brothers will have more genuine doubts. So give them preference and they can ask actually any area of their preference. It's a privilege for them. But others be specific, ask on the topic and be brief. Two questions for brothers and then one chance for sisters. So there will be a cordless mic on the sister's side. So we start our question answer session. So you may come to the mic point and ask the question. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, my name is Haidarul Islam from JNU. My question is, uh, as you said, that uh, the Holy Quran shook the world and changed the world. Every Muslim accept and I also believe. But in other side, enemies of Islam and uh, that uh, period, uh, a very famous uh, poetic also said that this Quran also divided families and made the son far from parents and made the daughter from okay but other side as you said that uh, the holy quran shook the world and uh, changed the world we and all muslim accept and believe but on other side enemies of islam said and uh, also famous poet also said that this quran also divided the families and made the son far from parents and daughter made far from um, mother. So what our answer should be in front of our enemies of Islam? Second question also I've had. Uh, I'll answer your first question, then inshallah you can, uh, you can stand over there. Uh, the brother has posed a question that we Muslims, we say that the Quran should reach the whole world and it is a solution but some non-muslims they claim that this quran it divides families it divides it keeps a father away from his son and it keeps uh, a daughter away from her mother well if someone claims a certain thing we don't accept it hook line hook line and sinker we don't just accept whatever the person says he should provide proof that does the quran divide people show it from the quran Rather, to the contrary, the Quran says in chapter 17, verse number 23, it says, And worship your Lord and do not worship anyone besides Him. And be good to parents. So much so that if one of them or both of them, they reach old age, do not say to them, Oof! Do people understand what does Oof mean? It is just an expression. Yani your father or your mother tells you to do something okay get the plates from the kitchen and you say oof mom not me again ask my small brother you're not even allowed to say oof to your mother you're not even allowed to say oof to your father these are the teachings of the quran moreover the quran, uh, prophet muhammad peace be upon him he said in a hadith of sahih tirmidhi he mentioned that paradise lies beneath the feet of your mother Paradise, it lies beneath the feet of your mother. Means, if you are nice to your mother, if you serve her, if you be kind and gentle with her, inshallah, you will go to paradise through that. So, irrespective whether your mother is a Muslim or a non-Muslim, if you are a revert, you have accepted faith, and your parents still are non-Muslims, still, you have your paradise under her feet. You have to serve them. This is what Islam teaches. This is what the Quran teaches. Moreover, in Surah Kahf, chapter number 46, Allah mentions that your mother, she bore you in pain. 
So respect the uh, womb which bore you. Various places you will find the Quran, it teaches us to be kind and nice with our parents. So the claim which non-Muslims they make, it has to be backed by proofs. And the claim which you have put forth is not valid because the Quran, it teaches the contrary, that we have to be kind and dutiful to our parents. I hope that answers the question. Uh, next question we'll take from uh, if any other brothers or any other sisters they have any question uh, this is Amir Malik uh, from JNU uh, my question to you is that the topic for today is the Quran the book that shook the world and uh, taking from the another idea that uh, shook has different meaning also uh, we see that we Muslims have a different percep perception for shuk, uh, but after taking example from 9-11 and other attacks, <laughs> you know that. Uh, so, uh, is, isn't it a word that should be ch uh, changed, that the, word, the book that changed the world, uh, instead of uh, shuk? That was my okay. suggestion also. That the well, uh, the topic has been given to me by the organizers, so you can catch their neck. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Anyways, no, uh, I mentioned this in my talk, that it uh, shook people, it surprised them, it shocked them. Now, there is a positive shock and there is a negative shock. That is what I was there is a positive and a negative to it. And that's why I mentioned it shocked them, it surprised them for good. So, when you see something uh, extraordinary, amazing, which might be for your benefit, you might get surprised and you might get shocked. Different yeah, just like this, you, you will go crazy. <laughs> One million uh, rupees. So similarly, the Quran, what is the purpose of this topic is that it has certain facts, it has certain uh, perception which are amazing and which are surprising for many. Like these scientific facts. I being a Muslim, a born Muslim, I myself was surprised when I came across these scientific facts. That how could this book mentioned these scientific facts so many years ago. Like this professor, he only went across this one verse and he accepted Islam. But the points which I mentioned, the Quran, it challenges you. This is a miracle in itself. The Quran is preserved since 1400 years ago, whereas the other scriptures, when we come to the Vedas, the Hindu scriptures, the Hindu pundits, they themselves have a dispute and they do not know where was it revealed, on whom was it revealed, and whether it was a revelation or no, this is a question in itself. When we come to the Bible, the Bible, we Muslims, we believe that Prophet Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, he received a revelation called Injil. But the today's Bible which we have is the corrupted form of Injil. It has many interpolations, many concoctions, many fabrications, many things have been put in, many things have been put out, uh, taken out. So we see it is not in its pure form. And the oldest Translation, that is the King James Version. It was revised by 32 scholars of Christendom. And they came up with this footnote that King James Version has grave defects. The oldest translation. And we know Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, did not speak English. Today the Bible we have is in English. So the Quran has maintained its purity. The Quran mentions, as I mentioned, about future it mentions about scientific facts. It mentions that there is no contradiction in the Quran. This is a big miracle. We find contradictions in various other religious books. But the Quran, it clearly claims that if it, this was from anyone besides God, you wouldn't find any, uh, you would have find, found many contradictions. But this is from God, so there are no contradictions in it. Thank you. So basically, yani these points uh, were meant to make us ponder over the Quran so that we reflect upon it and we ponder over the Quran. Now, now it's the turn, turn for the sisters. If there's no questions from the their side, we can continue. Chance for the sisters to ask questions. I guess uh, the sisters, they have understood the topic very well or they haven't understood anything. That's why they have no questions. Yes, we can have a question from the brother. 
Do we have non-Muslim brothers? The non-Muslims, if there are any non-Muslims in the audience, they are free to question on any topic in relates to Islam. It need not be specifically on my lecture. If there are any non-Muslims who have any clarifications, who have any doubts, who want to know about Islam, they have any type of uh, 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 thing to clarify, they can inshallah question. Yes, brother. Assalamu alaikum. I am Muhammad Ismail from Salem. Um, actually, I, I spoke with my friend about Islam. He said that uh, population is the main reason for the poverty of India. He is asking me, is the Quran is talking about family planning? Uh, how can I reply him? The brother has asked a question that the population is the biggest problem of India and does the Quran speak about family planning? Number one, your friend is wrong. Population is never the problem. Rather, it is a solution. Today, which country do we consider to be the superpower? China, I hear China from here. They have it all right. Technology, why? Because they have the population. They have manpower. You see these Chinese, they invent so many things. They are intelligent, plus they have this manpower. The second to China is India. Now it depends upon people how they manage their people. It depends upon those who are in, in authority. Because if you see people, they say, you know, there is poverty in this world, there is poverty in this world, we need family planning. If you analyze, travel through the earth and see how much of this earth is utilized, how much of this planet is utilized you won't even find 25%. And take India. How much of the land is utilized? Very less. So it is how people manage and it is how the authorities, they manage. It is upon them. And this population is never a problem. Moreover, Islam, it speaks about uh, families and to kill a child, to abort a child, is haram in Islam. To kill a child, it is not permissible in Islam. As we see, many people, they have these abortions. This is not permissible and this is uh, completely haram in Islam because whether you kill a child in the womb or whether you kill someone, it is the same. Allah tells us in the Quran in Surah Maida, chapter 5, verse number 32, that if any of you saved a human being, saved a life, it is as though he has saved the whole of humankind. And if any of you killed a life, took life of someone, it is as though you have killed the whole of humanity. So we see that this is not a problem and doing such things like abortion and uh, the like, this is not permissible in Islam. Yes, maybe we have the next question. There was a brother over here. Yes, you can come on the mic. Sorry? Uh, the camera would like to see you. Uh, thank you for giving me this opportunity. Uh, my name is Ibrahim from Sudan. Sorry? Uh, Ibrahim from Ibrahim Sudan. Ibrahim from Sudan. Okay. Yeah. So uh, I want to ask you that uh, uh, as our Prophet told us that Kulu insani yulud ala futra. Fawaru au yahawidanu au yaslimanu. Uh, I, I, I mean that uh, there is some uh, people that born for non-Muslim parents. Uh, what do you say saying about them? What uh, their uh, in the last their future? Uh, if if I've understood your question right, you yeah. said that the Prophet said every child is yeah. born on fitra. Yeah, he's born as a Muslim. Yeah. Then his non-Muslim yeah. parents, uh, their parents, Yahudanu yes, Yaslimanu. But if some people, they born uh, for non-Muslim parents. Okay. Yeah, what about them? Okay, I get that point. Yeah. Okay, yeah, thank you. Uh, the, uh, the brother has posed that there is a hadith wherein Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said 
every child is born on Deen al-Fitr, which means every child is born on Fitra, innate religion, means he's born as a Muslim. Until he becomes mature, then his family, his surroundings, they make him a Jew or a Christian or a pagan or an idol worshipper or the like. That's the reason a child who has not reached puberty, he is innocent. He is not accountable. A child who has not reached puberty, he is not accountable. Only when he reaches puberty, then his accountability starts. So the Prophet ﷺ said, every child is born as a Muslim. Now, irrespective, whether he's born in a Muslim family or a non-Muslim family, until and unless the child becomes mature, your accountability does not start. And this is the same for the Muslims and the non-Muslims. Whether he's a Muslim or a non-Muslim, they all have to practice and search the truth. They have to practice Islam and they have to strive to know the truth. They cannot say, I'm born in a Muslim family. My name is Muhammad. My name is Ibrahim. I can go to paradise. Did I take it to Jannah? No. We have to work hard. You have to worship only one God. You have to not associate partners with Him. You have to follow the guidelines of the glorious Quran. Similarly, with a non-Muslim who is born in a non-Muslim family, he also has to search the truth. And many people, they say that, you know, uh, we have been following what our forefathers were following. We worship idols because our forefathers, they worshipped idols. We worship Jesus Christ because we found our forefathers worshipping Jesus Christ, peace be upon him. Now, these people, they come up with this excuse and this is only an excuse. You know, when it comes to studies, when it comes to profession, they don't think this way. You know, if the father of a particular person was a farmer, he need not necessarily go and become a farmer. He might become a doctor, an engineer, because today he knows and he can choose what is good and what is bad for him. Similarly, when it comes to religion, we should choose what is good and we have to use our intellect. God Almighty has differentiated us from animals. You know, animals also eat, we also eat. Animals also reproduce, we also reproduce. What is the differentiator? It is the intellect. We have to think, we have to reason. Just by being born in a non-Muslim family, we cannot go caught free. We have to think about it, we have to come to a conclusion because we all have this common sense. No one goes and eats food from the garbage. We all have this common sense. So similarly, worshipping one God, not worshipping human beings, not worshipping idols, not worshipping man-made things, these are important and these are things which each and every individual has to reflect, whether a Muslim or a non-Muslim. Family does not matter. I hope that answers the question. Okay. Anyone from the other side of the sisters? Anybody? Okay. I am Abu Hamza from JNU. My question is, we believe that the Holy Quran is full of signs. And we believe that it's true book of God. But when we talk to our non-Muslim brothers, then they say, yes, we know that it's full of signs, but it was not revealed in the written shape by God. It was written later. So it's, it has chance that it was miswritten, as you say about Vedas. Then how will you convince them? That's question. See, I, an approach which the Quran also teaches us is you question the person. You ask him for proof. This is what the Quran teaches us, that if someone makes a claim, don't bash him up. Just ask him for his proof. Ask him, what makes you say this? Because today, the non-Muslims, those who reject the Quran, those who say this is not from God, those who do not believe in this, those who are staunch critics of Islam, they do not accept the Quran to be the word of God, but they also confirm that this book came into existence 1400 years ago. This book was 
revealed and proclaimed by a person named Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam in the deserts of Arabia about 1448 years ago. So the non-Muslims, they also confirm that this was revealed then. I mean, your non-Muslim friend, the allegation which he has posed is uh, very weak because historically we know that the Quran is 1400 years old. This is a historical fact which even the non-Muslims agree. And as I quoted Sir William Moore, a very strong critic of Islam. He criticized the Quran a lot, but still confirmed that this book has maintained its form and purity since 1200 years ago. Since, 20, uh, since 1200 years, and this is what he mentioned 200 years ago. So, even the non-Muslims, they uh, agree that this Quran was revealed in Arabia on Muhammad, peace be upon him. He was the one who preached, started preaching this Quran, and uh, they do not uh, make such uh, allegations. There are some people, you can show them uh, the historical facts, you can show them some quotes and even physically what I mentioned, the Quran is present in Top Kapi Museum and today we have uh, these historians who go back and historically they can show that you know uh, this thing is uh, so many years old. So in various ways Alhamdulillah the Quran is uh, proven to be uh, 1400 years old. Thank you. I hope that answers the question. Excuse me. Uh, my name is Muhammad Javed Khuslu from Jamia Hamdal. And I want to ask a simple question that uh, if Quran challenges to unite the humanity, then why even Muslims are divided into sects? Okay. The brother has asked a very good question that the Quran, it unites the humanity. Then why are Muslims divided into sects? different sects. Now again, your claim should be tested and checked with the Quran. Now what does the Quran tell us about sects? The Quran, it mentions O Prophet in Surah Anam, chapter number 6. The Quran says, O Prophet, those who make sects, you have nothing to do with them. Allah will deal with them on the day of judgment. This is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in Surah Anam chapter 6, verse number 159. Moreover, Allah tells in the Quran, Atiullah wa atiyu Rasul in chapter 4, verse number 59. Allah gives us the guideline, obey Allah and obey the messenger and this is our religion. We do not go about making sects that I am so and so, I am so and so. This is not what Islam teaches. This is what Muslims, they have made up. And this was not at the time of the Prophet ﷺ. This was not even later on. This was not even at the time of the scholars behind whose names these sects are made. For example, the Hanfi sect. Imam Abu Hanifa rahimullah, he never said, make a sect of my name. Imam Shafi rahimullah, he never said, make a sect of my name. Or call yourself as a Hanafi or a Shafi. This is not what they taught. This is not what Islam teaches. Islam teaches you that you call yourself as a Muslim. muslimin That I am a Muslim. You follow the way of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So Islam is completely against making any type of sects. And if you have such people, if you have such friends, colleagues, then you should advise them that this is not the way of Islam. And we should be united. And we should not make sects. And we should not divide this religion. I hope that answers the question. The next question is the last question. Okay, so you may you be having many doubts. So our scholars will be present here and you may personally rectify your doubts with them. Okay. Uh, my name is Vishnu. I'm a non-Muslim. I'm here with my friends. My, uh, my doubt is that uh, my, these guys always have uh, dogs and pictures. Can you be a bit loud, please? My name is Vishnu. Okay. I am a non-Muslim coming from Karagat. Uh, I am here with my friends and these guys always have had pigs and dogs from their life and their paths. Uh, can you explain why that in clear? They have what? They are always avoiding pigs and dogs. Pigs and dogs? Yeah. What are pigs and dogs doing? They are always avoiding pigs and dogs. Muslims? Yeah, my Muslim okay. friends. Okay, okay. I, I, I get your question. Them. So we have a brother over here, a non-Muslim brother. Uh, firstly, I congratulate you 
that you have taken the initiative and you have come here in this conference. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide you. And he says that uh, Muslims, his friends, they usually avoid pigs and dogs. Now, pigs, avoiding them, what I assume is eating them. Allah tells us in the Quran, in Surah Baqarah, chapter number 2, verse number 173 that forbidden for you for food are dead meat flesh of swine anything on which the name of anyone besides Allah has been taken any any food prepared on which any other's name has been taken or sacrificed for someone else and blood these four things are forbidden so for a Muslim eating pork this is forbidden in Islam and if you see even in the Hindu scriptures if you read Manu Smriti in chapter number 5 you see that that scripture Manu Smriti, Manu Smriti it forbids you from eating pork if you pick up the Bible in the book of Leviticus chapter number 11 verse number 7 and 8 it says that pork should not be eaten. The Bible also prohibits you from eating pork. But we see many of our Christian brothers, they eat it, but the Bible, it forbids eating pork. Now when we come to uh, the point, it is forbidden from God Almighty. He knows what is good and what is bad for us. We abstain from it. God mentions something is bad for us, we don't eat it. Now, using our human limited intellect, when we see what are some of the harms of having pork we come to know that the pork it has got several diseases if the person consumes it a person can be affected with hypertension a person can be affected with uh, various diseases there is an egg in the meat of pork which goes into your body it goes into your bloods and it can cause severe damage. It can even make you blind if it reaches your, uh, the nerves of your eyes. It can make you insane if it reaches your brains. It can even kill you. There are various such diseases. So we see that uh, eating pork is forbidden from God Almighty. That's the reason we do not have pork. Moreover, as far as dogs are concerned, then you know that Dogs are crazy animals. If they bite you, <laughs> you are in big time trouble. You got to go to the doctor and you got to get these injections before it was 14. Now, I don't know, it's three or uh, how, how they have uh, combined those 14. But nevertheless, again, uh, dog is not uh, something which Muslims, they associate themselves with because the Prophet wasallam he has mentioned in the hadith that these dogs, they should be kept away they should not be kept in your house except for the guardian dog. If you have a dog as a guardian, as a security for your house, for your office, for your farm, for your uh, villa, whatever, then inshallah you can have this dog. Apart from that, keeping a dog, this is not something which we Muslims do and it is not permissible for us. I hope that answers the question. Assalamu alaikum. Yes. Alaikum <coughs> salam <coughs> Brother, my question is sensitive. So you have to answer going into deep. I have my to answer? Question, my question is very sensitive. According to atmosphere nowadays, through the whole world, so you have to answer, uh, you have to give me answer uh, going into depth. If not, it's so sensitive, uh, don't emotion ask. emotion and not anything. Like, my question is about MSM. I have heard about the MSM, Mujahid Students Moment or anything, last word, uh, last letter. So such type of a words, Mujahid, and which indicates controversy through the world. So my question is, if we have, uh, if we put our child name as a Mujahid with the emotion, 
in the respect of Islam, in the respect of Quran, in the respect of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, in the respect of great mujahideen who served and sacrificed a lot in contribution to Islam. So when we, when he will become 18 year or more than 18 year, and non-Muslim, any brother of uh, uh, of the world, when listen such type of a name, mujahid, so his mind struck a question that he may be under the influence of any such type of organization which is related to terrorist at, uh, to terrorist and such type of a, uh, under the list of organization so should we avoid such type of a name or should we put in the emotion of islam this is a very sensitive because i have a example khalid mujahid marhum i thought first time that his name played a good role to arrest him and to... Uh, to well, can you to finish your question him? quickly? I've understood your question. Yeah, yeah. Uh, can I answer your question? Okay, no, okay. Uh, okay, so I think give, Brother give Mohammed can ask, got the point, so you can... And so, so the question can be asked answered once our guest has completed his speech. Okay, so uh, we'll just have a break as uh, mentioned by the organizers and then inshallah we can continue. Oh, yeah. Jazakallah khair, brother Muhammad Khan. Inshallah, the answer of uh, the raised question will be followed by the uh, chances of our distinguished guest here. But this, this is the opportunity of uh, our respected guests from uh, various parts of this Kerala. First of all, uh, Mr. Shamsuddin N. He is the member of Legislative Assembly Kerala. He is the, one of the ma major guests of this social debate. And also I would like to share a, an another pleasure in front of you. Mr. Shamsuddin Sahib, he got an award just this evening from Patanandita, the nearby town, for his performance and excellence in parliamentary activities. He is the, the award named Shrestha Samajiga Award. The best parliamentarian award he got for his local area development and also for the performance in legislative assembly. Uh, he got Shrestha Samajiga Award. And also we got a guest here, Mr. T.T. Ismail, Member of Public Service Commission, Government of Kerala. And also Khan Shah Jahan, a social activist from Patanandita. And also Dr. Sajuddin, Joint Director, Director of Higher Education, Government of Kerala. And Mr. Naushad P., Resource Person, UAD, UAD Adar, Government of Kerala. And I, I feel a lot of pleasure to invite Mr. N. Shamsuddin, member of Kerala Legislative Assembly, to address the gathering. Sir, please. Respected friends on the dais Mr. Shahdad Muhammad Khan Sabir Nawaz and T.T. Smile member public service commission Khan Shah Jahan and Dr. Sajuddin P. Naushad, dear brothers and sisters from the different parts of the country and outside the country. Dear brothers, sisters, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. 
First of all, I congratulate Muslim Students Movement Kerala State Committee. The reason is very genuine because they arranged a national conference for the highlighted students in the different parts of the country. I think it is not a first time attempt. Before this conference, MSM arranged this type of conference earlier also. Here, when we came on the dais, I could observe whatever the discussions are going on here. Very serious debate, very serious discussion re regarding the belief, faith and the recent phenomena and the social life, everything is discuss discussions are going on here. I congratulate you and uh, uh, due to our addressing, we have a short break for your serious discussion. I, I apologize before you. Uh, I do not detain you more with a lengthy speech. I only congratulate you. I just, uh, uh, we, we know the, this time, Muslim students, especially our youth, uh, very widely emerging in educational field. Technology strengthened the belief now. On the path of belief, in this year, it's a very widespread technology, IT, computer, internet, the technology, uh, wherever the country, the technology are progressive. Technology strengthen now, now the, our Islamic belief. You know, Islam is a religion of peace. But somebody trying to become Islam is a religion of terrorism. And they are spreading Islamophobia, a new word in the world. Actually, we will have a good awareness regarding the forces are trying to become terrorism. Then, you know, our students, especially in Kerala, our students are achieving great things. Uh, one year back, in Kerala newspaper, we got a news. A village girl having very normal living circumstances. Uh, her name, her name, Neslim Nilangodan. She is coming uh, from Nalambur. She, uh, she was leading the young scientist in Ireland for find out a new star which is called Circonium star. In even Kerala, our girls are, are also emerging and uh, achieving international, international awards. This is the, this is this time, very widely our students emerging and uh, uh, expressing their, then in this time, I, I want to say one thing. Kerala, with all proud, I, I would like to say, Kerala is the best model. Here we are having good religion. Here we are having good progress in educational and so, uh, socially and cultural in all field. Both aspects we standing, we are, we are protecting the religious faith and uh, achieving the progress in all uh, 
uh, all other field. Uh, I would like to attention of the all other delegates and uh, you kindly watch and observe how the Kerala students uh, achieving the progress in their social life, educational life. Uh, I do not uh, detain you with a long speech. I congratulate you all, especially the organizers. They are the Muslim students movement. And uh, the, you are coming from different parts of the country and outside the country. All are our brothers and sisters with all love and affection and uh, uh, in a meaning of enthusiasm. Once again, I congratulate you. Wish you all success. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. I would like to invite Mr. T.T. Ismail Sahib, Member of Public Service Commission, Kerala, to address the gathering, sir. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Bismillah alhamdulillah. Wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillahi lameen. Wa ala alihi wa sahabhi ajmai namabad. Respected President of this August function, my dear friend, Jinnab Jabir Nawaz Sahib, respected member of Legislative Assembly Kerala, my dear friend Jinnab Yen Shamsuddin Sahib, my dear colleagues, dear Shah Jahan Sahib, P.S. Ajitin Sahib, now Shah Sahib, my dear students, and brothers and sisters. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Inna ladina amanu wa amil swalihati. Kaanat lehum jannatul firdaus zinuzila. Halidin afiya la yaboon an hai wala. I am very happy to be an invitee of this August function. Because I think we are delegates from Arabs countries and all over states from India. History taught us, or we are taught, history begins from, Renaissance begins from Italy. Everybody taught it. Renaissance begins from Italy. Really it begins from Arabs. It begins after Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. By the teaching of Prophet Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa renaissance begins. And it is born up in Arab and it is brought up in India. Indians and Arabs are the fathers or originals of the renaissance. It is for the well-being of the world, renaissance, Navothanam. Kerala Tal Muslingala Sambadhi Chattatolam, Navothanath in the Atum Ujjalamai Talaru Bhavatilana Kerala Tal Muslingala Nilad. Indu Gundu and the Chodichal. Avada Ulamakarum, Umbrakalum, Unichin in the Runu in the Ladan. Thirchaitum, our Samuhatod, Pradibata the Yodu Woody, Sam Sarichu Dodangirunu, Todakatil Tan. Our Tiagi Galayun. Adult social commitment Dodu Woody, our Samuhatil Rangichan. Apol Kerala Telam Slingalku, Uribad Vijayundai. Kerala Tele, Umarakalkum, Ulamakalkum, Adil Ulia Pangandai. Mujahid student movement, Itratil, Uru professional conference Sangare Pikumbo. Turciaitum, Adinde Uru Patinatam, Avartanam, Undakanadu, Iuru Bodate, Nelanathagan, Navotanathende, Renaissance in Uru Bodate, Udia Talamurilek Pankavokiyan, Yadarthil Cheyanath, Eniku Bohmanabatan of Surtu Samsudin Sahibinum, Samaitan of William Prashond, Enalum Uranjimit and Ingolo Samit Chitilangil, Varevum, Yatri, Woke, Urda Vilagum and the Ladund, Undrenda Gariangal Matra Soji began. No doubt a paradigm in the paradigm, social commitment in a Kurcha paradigm. Professional students are an English level. Social commitment in a Kurcha too. With the article of some Sarichu and Rikumbum, in a Kutun and the Vilum and Nehula Ila Hilala. Would create a Kurcha paradigm to Utam. Ningata social commitment in the paradigm, 
ഒരു ക്രിയേറ്ററെക്കുറിച്ച് ആരാണ് സൃഷ്ടാവ് എന്നതിനെക്കുറിച്ച് ആദ്യമായിട്ട് നിങ്ങളുടെ സഹപ്രവർത്തകരോടും സമൂഹത്തോടും പങ്കുവെക്കാൻ കഴിയുക എന്നുള്ളതാണ് വിദ്യ അഭ്യസിച്ചുകൊണ്ട് മുന്നോട്ട് ഉന്നതമായി മുന്നോട്ട് കൊണ്ടുപോയി പോയിക്കൊണ്ടിരിക്കുന്ന ഓരോരുത്തരും അവരുടെ ഈ സോഷ്യൽ കമ്മിറ്റ്മെൻറ്റ് പിറകെ 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 പോകുന്ന ഇല്ലാതെ പോകുന്ന ഒരു സാഹചര്യം ഉണ്ടാകുകയാണ് വിദ്യ കൂടുന്നു സോഷ്യൽ കമ്മിറ്റ്മെൻറ്റ് കുറയുന്നു ഒരു ഡോക്ടർ ആകുന്ന ഒരാളെക്കുറിച്ച് അയാൾ ഡോക്ടർ ആകുന്നത് തന്നെ സേവനത്തിനാണ് അയാളുടെ പ്രവർത്തനം ഒരു രോഗിയെ സേവിക്കുകയാണ് രോഗിയെ ശുശ്രൂഷിക്കുകയാണ് പക്ഷെ ആ രംഗത്ത് ഏറ്റവും വലിയ എക്സ്പ്ലോയിറ്റേഷൻ നടക്കുന്നിടത്തേക്ക് ഒരു ഡോക്ടർ മാറുന്നതിൻ്റെ താല്പര്യം എന്നാണ് സമൂഹത്തോടുള്ള പ്രതിബദ്ധ എന്ന് പ്രതിബദ്ധത എന്ന് പറയുന്നത് നമ്മുടെ സാമൂഹിക ജീവിതത്തിൽ സോഷ്യൽ ഈവിൾസ് സോഷ്യൽ ഈവിൾസ് കൂടുകയും പ്രതിബദ്ധത കുറഞ്ഞു വരും കമ്മിറ്റ്മെൻറ്റ് കുറഞ്ഞു വരികയും ചെയ്യുന്ന ഒരു വല്ലാത്തൊരു പ്രയാസകരമായിട്ടുള്ള സാഹചര്യം ഉള്ളപ്പോൾ സത്യവിശ്വാസികളെ സംബന്ധിച്ചിടത്തോളം ഇവിടെ എല്ലാ വിഭാഗം ആളുകളുണ്ട് അപ്പോൾ അപ്പോഴും ഞാൻ പറയാൻ ഉദ്ദേശിക്കുന്ന ഒരു കാര്യം സത്യവിശ്വാസികളെ സംബന്ധിച്ചിടത്തോളം അമലുസ്വാലിഹാത്ത് സൽക്കർമ്മങ്ങൾ എന്ന് പറയുന്നിടത്ത് നമസ്കാരം നോമ്പ് ഹജ്ജ് സക്കാത്ത് അതിൻ്റെ ഒക്കെ ഉപോൽബലകമായിട്ട് രൂപപ്പെട്ടു വരേണ്ട ഉണ്ടായി വരേണ്ട സത്യസാക്ഷ്യം അതിനപ്പുറത്ത് ആ സത്യസാക്ഷ്യത്തിൻ്റെ നിർബന്ധം എന്ന് പറഞ്ഞിട്ടില്ലെങ്കിൽ പോലും അതിനനിവാര്യമായിട്ടുള്ളൊരു ഘടകം ഗുഡ് ഡീഡ്സ് ആണ് അമലു സാലിഹാത്ത് ഗുഡ് ഡീഡ്സ് അവിടെയാണ് ഏറ്റവും നന്നായി സത്യത്തിൽ വിശ്വസിക്കുകയും സൽക്കർമ്മങ്ങൾ പ്രവർത്തിക്കുകയും ചെയ്യുന്നവർക്ക് ജന്നാത്തുൽ ഫുർദൗസ് ഉണ്ട് എന്ന് പറയും ഞാനിങ്ങനെ ഇങ്ങനെ വരുമ്പോൾ ഇങ്ങനെ ആലോചിച്ചു എന്താ അവിടെ പറയാം എന്താ നിങ്ങളുടെ മുമ്പിൽ അവതരിപ്പിക്കുക അപ്പോൾ എൻ്റെ ഓർമ്മയിൽ വന്നത് പെട്ടെന്ന് വന്നത് ഇതാണ് ഇന്നല്ല ദീൻ ആമനു ആമിലു സ്വാലിഹാത്ത് സൂറത്തുൽ കാഫിലെ അവസാനത്തെ അധ്യായം അവിടെ ആ അധ്യ ആ ആയത്ത് കഴിഞ്ഞ് ഉടനെ പറയുന്നത് അള്ളാഹുവിൻ്റെ ഒരു സിഫത്താണ് അള്ളാഹുവിൻ്റെ അപാരമായിട്ടുള്ള ശക്തിവിശേഷത്തെക്കുറിച്ചാണ് ദൈവത്തിൻ്റെ അപാരമായിട്ടുള്ള ശക്തിവിശേഷം കടലായ കടലൊക്കെ മഷയായിട്ട് നിങ്ങൾ നിറച്ചു വെച്ച് അത് എഴുതിയാൽ പോലും നിൻ്റെ നാഥൻ്റെ ഗുണങ്ങൾ നിൻ്റെ നാഥൻ്റെ പരാശക്തി വിശേഷണങ്ങൾ അവശേഷിക്കുന്നില്ല തീർന്നു പോകുന്നില്ല പിന്നെയും നിങ്ങൾ അതുപോലെയുള്ള കടലുകൾ കൊണ്ടുവന്നാൽ പോലും നിൻ്റെ നാഥൻ്റെ പരാശക്തിയെക്കുറിച്ചുള്ള ശക്തിവിശേഷണങ്ങൾ അവിടെ നിലച്ചു പോകുന്നില്ല എന്ന് പറയുന്ന അള്ളാഹിനെക്കുറിച്ച് പറയുന്നു അള്ളാഹുവിനെക്കുറിച്ച് അവിടെ പറയുന്നു ദൈവത്തെക്കുറിച്ച് ദൈവത്തെക്കുറിച്ച് അവിടെ പറഞ്ഞു വെച്ചിരിക്കുന്നു എന്നിട്ട് അടുത്ത ആയത്തിലേക്ക് വരുമ്പോൾ പിന്നെ പറയുന്നത് കുൽ ഇന്നമാ അന ബഷറും മിസുലുക്കും യൂഹ ഇലയ്യ കുൽ ഇന്നമാ അന ബഷറും മിസുലുക്കും യൂഹ ഇലയ്യ ഞാൻ നശ്വരനായിട്ടുള്ളൊരു മനുഷ്യനാണ് ഞാനൊരു മനുഷ്യനാണ് നബിയെ നീ പറയുക താങ്കൾ പറയുക ഞാനൊരു മനുഷ്യൻ മാത്രമാണ് നശ്വരനായിട്ടുള്ളൊരു മനുഷ്യൻ പക്ഷേ അവിടെ നബിയെ നമ്മളിൽ നിന്ന് വ്യത്യസ്തനാക്കുന്നത് നബിയിൽ റെഗുലേഷൻ ചേർത്ത് വെച്ചിരിക്കുന്നു അള്ളാൻ്റെ വഹി ചേർത്ത് വെച്ചിരിക്കുന്നു എന്നുള്ളടത്താണ് നബി പ്രവാചകൻ നബി എന്നൊക്കെ ഉള്ള വിശേഷണത്തിന് മുഹമ്മദും റസൂൽ ഉല്ലാഹി സല്ലാഹു അലൈഹി സ്വലമ അർഹനാകുന്നത് പ്രവാചകനെയും ദൈവത്തെയും ചേർത്ത് വെച്ച് അമലുസ് വാലിഹത്തിനെ കുറിച്ച് പറഞ്ഞു വെച്ച് ഒരായാത്ത് നമ്മളുടെ മുമ്പിലേക്ക് ദൃഷ്ടാന്തം നമ്മുടെ മുമ്പിലേക്ക് വരുമ്പോൾ ഒരു സത്യവിശ്വാസിക്ക് നാരോ മൈൻഡഡ്നെസ് പറ്റില്ല സോഷ്യൽ ഈവിൾസിനോട് പൊരുത്തപ്പെട്ടു പോകാൻ പറ്റില്ല മറിച്ച് ഞാൻ എൻ്റെ സ്റ്റേറ്റ് എൻ്റെ ഗവൺമെൻറ് എന്നെ ഒരു ഡോക്ടർ ആക്കുന്നത് എന്നെ ഒരു പ്രൊഫഷണലാക്കി മാറ്റുന്നതിന് എൻ്റെ സ്റ്റേറ്റിൽ ഒരു തൊഴിലാളി കൊടുക്കുന്ന നികുതി ഉണ്ടെങ്കിൽ കേട്ടോ എൻ്റെ സ്റ്റേറ്റിൽ ഒരു തൊഴിലാളി അവൻ കഷ്ടിച്ച് അധ്വാനിച്ച് ഗവൺമെൻറ് കൊടുക്കുന്ന നികുതിയിൽ ഒരംശം ഞാൻ ഡോക്ടറായി വരുമ്പം അതിന് ചിലവഴിക്കപ്പെടുന്നു ഞാനൊരു എഞ്ചിനീയറായിട്ട് വരുമ്പം അതിന് ചിലവഴിക്കപ്പെടുന്നു അങ്ങനെ വരുമ്പം ഞാൻ വിദ്യാഭ്യാസ രംഗത്ത് ഉയർന്നുയർന്നു പോകുമ്പം സമൂഹത്തോടുള്ള കമ്മിറ്റ്മെൻറ്റ് മറന്നു പോകാൻ പാടില്ല മറിച്ച് ഒരു പ്രൊഫഷണൽ സ്റ്റുഡൻസ് എത്ര ആദരവാണ് സമൂഹം നിങ്ങൾക്ക് തരുന്നത് എത്ര ആദരവാണ് ഒരു മാസ്റ്റർ ഒരു അധ്യാപകന് ഒരു ഡോക്ടർക്ക് ഒരു എഞ്ചിനീയർക്ക് പ്രൊഫഷണൽ രംഗത്ത് ടെക്നോളജി നേരത്തെ എൻ്റെ പ്രിയ സഹപ്രവർത്തകൻ ഷംസുദ്ദീൻ സാഹിബ് പറഞ്ഞ വിദ്യയുടെ വികാസം ലോകത്ത് വരുത്തിയിട്ടുള്ള അത്ഭുതകരമായിട്ടുള്ള മാറ്റങ്ങൾ ആ മാറ്റങ്ങളിൽ നിന്നുകൊണ്ട് ചിന്തിക്കുമ്പോൾ എത്ര ഒരു ആദരവാണ് എത്ര ബഹുമാനമാണ് ഈ പ്രൊഫഷണൽ സ്റ്റുഡൻസിന് ലോകം പകർന്നു
രോഗികൾ വരുമ്പം രോഗികളുടെ അസുഖമായിട്ട് നടന്നു വരാൻ കഴിയാത്ത രോഗികളുടെ അടുത്തേക്ക് ഡോക്ടർ സൈനുദ്ദീൻ വീട്ടിലേക്ക് ചെല്ലുന്നു മരുന്ന് വാങ്ങാൻ അവരുടെ അടുത്ത് പണമില്ല അപ്പോൾ അവർക്ക് മരുന്ന് വാങ്ങാനുള്ള പണം കൊടുക്കുന്നു പണമില്ലാതെ ശുശ്രൂഷിക്കുന്നു വീട്ടിലേക്ക് കടന്നു ചെന്നുകൊണ്ട് ശുശ്രൂഷിക്കാനൊക്കുന്നു എന്നിട്ട് ടി പത്മനാഭം പറയുന്നു ഇത് ഖലീഫ ഉമറിൻ്റെ പിൻഗാമിയാണ് രാത്രി ആരും ഇല്ല ആരും ഇല്ലാത്ത സമയത്ത് തൻ്റെ ഭാര്യയെ മറ്റൊരു സ്ത്രീയുടെ ഗർഭം പഠിപ്പിക്കാൻ പറഞ്ഞയക്കുന്ന മഹാനായ ഖലീഫ ഉമറിൻ്റെ പിൻഗാമി അയാളാണ് ഈ സൈനുദ്ദീൻ എന്ന് പറയുന്നു ഡോക്ടർ സൈനുദ്ദീൻ ആവാൻ അങ്ങനെയുള്ള ഒരുപാട് പ്രൊഫഷനുകൾ സൃഷ്ടിച്ച ഒരു സമൂഹത്തിലേക്ക് ഇപ്പോഴുള്ള ഈ കൺസ്യൂമറിസത്തിൻ്റെ എന്താ പറയുക ഗ്ലോബലൈസേഷൻ്റെ പിറകെ വന്ന നവ സമൂഹത്തിൻ്റെ ഒരു സ്വന്തത്തിലേക്ക് വലിഞ്ഞു മുറുകുന്ന ഉൾവലിഞ്ഞു പോകുന്ന ഞാനും എൻ്റെ കുട്ടികളും ഒരു തട്ടാനും മാത്രം മതി കെട്ടിയോളും മാത്രം മതി എന്നുള്ള അണുകുടുംബത്തിലേക്ക് വലിഞ്ഞു പോകുന്ന വല്ലാത്തൊരു വല്ലാത്തൊരു അണുകുടുംബ സംവിധാനത്തിലേക്ക് പോകുന്ന ഒരു സമൂഹത്തിൽ നിന്നുകൊണ്ട് ലാ ഇലാഹ് ഇല്ലല്ലയുടെ അള്ളാഹു അല്ലാതെ ഒരു ആരാധ്യനില്ല എന്ന് പറയുമ്പോൾ അതിൻ്റെ നന്മകൾ ലോകത്തെ മുഴുവൻ ചൂണ്ടി നിൽക്കുന്നതാണ് അത് ഒരു മതവിഭാഗീയതയുടെ ജാതി വിഭാഗീയതയുടെ വർണ്ണദേശ ഭാഷ വ്യത്യാസങ്ങളുടെ അപ്പുറത്തേക്ക് മനുഷ്യൻ്റെ മാനവികത ചേർത്ത് വെക്കേണ്ട കൂറയെ കീറിയുമ്പോൾ കോക്ക്രോച്ചിനെ കീറുമ്പോൾ നിങ്ങൾ അവിടെ അള്ളാൻ അറിയണം നിങ്ങൾ ഓരോന്നും അറിയുമ്പം ഓരോ ഒരക്ഷരം പഠിക്കുമ്പം നിങ്ങൾ ദൈവത്തിലേക്ക് എത്തുകയാണ് ദൈവത്തെ നിങ്ങൾ എന്ത് വിളിച്ചാലും അള്ളാഹു എന്ന് പറയുന്ന റബ്ബുലിസത്തിലേക്ക് നിങ്ങൾ എത്തുകയാണ് ആ ഒരു വാല്യൂ ബേസ്ഡ് എഡ്യൂക്കേഷനിലേക്ക് മെറ്റീരിയലിസം ഭൗതികത മാത്രം ഉറഞ്ഞു തുള്ളുന്ന ഒരു ഒരു ലോകക്രമത്തിൽ നിന്ന് ഒരു ഒരു എന്താ പറയുക സോഷ്യൽ ലീവിനെസ് മാറി നിൽക്കുന്ന വാല്യൂ ബേസ്ഡ് എഡ്യൂക്കേഷനിലേക്ക് തിരികെ കൊണ്ടുവരാൻ എഡ്യൂക്കേഷനെ തിരികെ കൊണ്ടുവരാൻ അവൻ മതം ഏതുമാകട്ടെ നന്മയുടെ മനുഷ്യൻ അള്ളാഹു എന്താ പറയൂ ഇന്ന അറുന്ന് സമാവാത്തവല്ലോ അങ്ങനെ ആകാശഭൂമികളിൽ കരയിലും കടലിലും ആകാശത്തും സഞ്ചരിക്കാൻ അള്ളാഹു മനുഷ്യന് മാത്രം ലഗത് കറം നാ ബനി ആദം എന്ന് പറ ഞാൻ അവസാനിപ്പിക്കുകയാണ് അങ്ങനെ മനുഷ്യനെ മനുഷ്യനെ മഹത്വവൽക്കരിച്ച ഒരു 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 സംവിധാനത്തിൽ നിന്നുകൊണ്ട് ദൈവത്തിൻ്റെ ഒരു ദൈവത്തിൻ്റെ സൃഷ്ടികൾ എന്ന നിലക്ക് ഒരു പരിസ്ഥിതിയോടും സമൂഹത്തോടും മുഴുവൻ എല്ലാ സംവി സംവിധാനത്തോടും നസ്വിഹത്ത് കാണിക്കുന്ന ഗുണകാംക്ഷ കാണിക്കുന്ന ഒരർത്ഥമാണ് ഈ പതിനെട്ടാമത്തെ ആവർത്തനത്തിലും നിങ്ങളുടെ മനസ്സിലുള്ളത് എന്ന് ഞാൻ ഉറച്ചു വിശ്വസിക്കുന്നു അതുകൊണ്ട് വളരെ സന്തോഷമുണ്ട് നിങ്ങളോട് ഇങ്ങനെ സത്യത്തിൽ ഈ ഒരു സമയം പിന്നെ വല്ലാതെ പണിപ്പെട്ടുണ്ടാക്കിയതാണ് നിങ്ങളോട് ഇങ്ങനെ ഒരു ഒരു അഡ്രസ് ചെയ്യാൻ കഴിഞ്ഞു എന്നുള്ളതിൽ വളരെ സന്തോഷവാനാണ് ഇവിടെ ഈ ഇന്ത്യയിൽ നിന്ന് എല്ലാ ഭാഗത്തു നിന്നും കുട്ടികൾ എത്തിയിരിക്കുന്നു ഞാൻ നേരത്തെ സൂചിപ്പിച്ചതുപോലെ അറബ് അറബ് നാടുകളിൽ നിന്ന് സുഡാനിൽ നിന്നടക്കം കുട്ടികൾ എത്തിയിരിക്കുന്നു അവർക്കൊക്കെ എല്ലാവർക്കും അള്ളാഹു അതിൻ്റെ ഒരു തക്കതായിട്ടുള്ള പ്രതിഫലം നൽകട്ടെ എന്ന് പ്രാർത്ഥിച്ചുകൊണ്ട് ഈ ചടങ്ങിൽ സംബന്ധിക്കാൻ ഉള്ള ഒരു ഒരു ഭാഗ്യം ലഭിച്ചതിൽ അള്ളാഹുവിനെ അഗത അങ്ങേയറ്റം ശ്രദ്ധിച്ചു കൊണ്ട് നിർത്തുന്നു വാഹൃദ വാനഹമുദ്ദിലാഹർബലാലിമീൻ അസ്സാം വലിക്കും Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, well, is the brother present or has he left? The brother who posed the question. Okay, mashallah, he's here. Uh, <clears throat> had to keep you waiting. The guests, they had to leave. So, but still, I'm back here just to answer your question so that you don't go home angry with us. <laughs> no. Anyways, the brother, he had posed a question which, uh, out of which I understand what your objection is now as far as this name is concerned msm alhamdulillah it is a very uh, beautiful name the mujahid students movement now you don't need to be scared of this word mujahid okay i don't find any terrorist organization by this name if you know any let me know with this name I'm not talking about hypothesis. I'm not talking about assumptions. I'm talking about something which is confirmed. Now, regarding something which is confirmed, if you see Alpha, which is a non-Muslim terrorist organization, Tamil Tigers, again, a Hindu terrorist organization, which you see very often in the newspaper, which is a confirmed news. Now, basically just keep this simple thing in mind mujahid this word it comes from jihad 
and jihad technically means to strive or to struggle okay now you came all the way from your house over here to attend this conference you strived and you struggled you did jihad so you are also a mujahid technically speaking a doctor he strives and struggles to learn medicine he has to stay awake all night he has to eat less he can sleep he has to strive hard so he is a mujahid in arabic linguistically he is a mujahid so if you see this word has been coined by the media and it has been made like a terror word the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam till 13 years in makkah they were oppressed they were beaten they were killed they were looted for 13 years in makkah and they were expelled from their own land still they did not fight them back and this was the jihad of that time this was a jihad to be patient to be patient is also a jihad simple you don't need to be scared about that islam is very clear against any type of terrorism islam is against that as i mentioned in surah maida chapter 5 verse number 32 it says whoever kill a person he is as if he has killed the whole of humanity if you have saved someone it is as though you have saved the whole of humanity so you see these brothers mashallah from so many years in different cities they are doing jiddu jihad they are organizing these big conferences mashallah organizing this on a big level i come from a background wherein we organize programs so i can understand that what effort it takes it is nice and comfortable for the audience to come and sit and watch and go but what the organizers go through is a real tough time it is in real sense it is a type of jihad they have to strive and struggle not eating staying awake whole night coordinating and a lot of things are behind this to organize something so what you have to realize is that as a muslim you should not be apologetic rather explain to the non muslims explain to those who are a victim of media who are a victim of misinformation and you can go about inshallah you don't need to be apologetic you don't need to be uh, someone feeling feeling inferior for a certain aspect i hope that answers your question yeah i have a Uh, inshallah sorry, if you sorry. have further questions sorry. you can meet me in person inshallah we can discuss okay so we will maintain the decorum i came back to answer your question so inshallah we can meet uh, if you have further questions i conclude this wa akhiru da'wana alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin and i give the uh, podium to the chairperson inshallah he will conclude the session jazakumullah khair brother mohammed khan so with that we come to the end of this session and actually i told you earlier because we have got so many sessions tomorrow also and the english session is separate tomorrow so we will have enough time to interact with the scholars and even if after the sessions the question and session you have got doubts you want to know things in detail they are all available here at least for two days almost all of them are available for three days so we can meet them personally and talk to them so now we are coming to the end of the session today so there are a few more talks not talks just instructions on how to for the arrangements in the venue for your stay and all so with that we'll conclude the session 1 and tomorrow you have programs in the main stage and also at two other venues i hope that you all have the detailed program list with you so you can select the program and one venue is exclusively english so majority of the students i think now the majority of the students from are from the outside campuses so they can select the english venue and there will be exclusive malayalam venue also so now i hand over the mic to the organizers for the instructions and and the other brief uh, speeches of the uh, day assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi
ഇന്നത്തെ ഏറ്റവും അവസാനത്തെ സെഷനിലേക്ക് നമ്മൾ പ്രവേശിക്കുകയാണ് സദസ്സിൻ്റെ ഒരു ചെറിയ 